If you have your Bibles, let's open up your Bibles, you know what, to uh, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John, uh, 1 John chapter 5, and I, in verse 4, and I have it up here on the screens because I want everybody to see it together. Look what it says. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Now, we're going to talk today about the two U's, the, the, the two visions, the two... Um, Remember when Paul says this, he says, the thing I don't want to do, I do. Do you remember this? And he says, the thing that I don't want to do, that's that's what I do. Ah, okay. How many can relate to that? Sometimes the very thing you don't want to do, you do. The very thing you want to do, you don't do. And so what, what what is Paul talking about? Here's what he's talking about. There's two visions. There's two use. There's... There's the calling that God has called you to. Listen to me very carefully. There's a calling that God has called you to. I'll show it to you up here on the screen in a minute. Of greatness. Okay. And that's not just for, that's not, oh, yes, you know what? Mike's awesome and God has called him and God. No, that's, that is for Mike. But if that includes everybody in this row. Amen. Amen. And the older people think, no, I'm too old for this. And the younger people think, oh, I'm too young for this. And you know what? And Satan comes in and he comes in with all these excuses, you know what, of, of why that person can walk as an overcomer, but I can't. Let, let me tell you what that source comes from. It comes from the pit of hell. Listen, I, you say, but pastor, I'm not even a believer. Well, you're here today. Here, here's a thought. Today, maybe is a good day for you to get saved today. Maybe today is a good day for you to come into the family of God today. Maybe you're watching at home and you're like, eh, I don't even know. You know, these Christians are wacky. Let me tell you what we are. We're wacky. We're wacky smart. That's who we're wacky smart. You know what I mean? Because let me tell you what. Let me, let me confess the truth. Let me be a proclaimer of t- truth today. There's only one God. And there's only one plan of your restoration. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this needs to be proclaimed. There's one God. You know what? Hell is real and so is heaven. And the only thing that is going to keep you out of heaven is you're rejecting God's plan of salvation. Which, what is that plan? There's only one plan. There's only one name under heaven by which men can be saved. And I don't care what your college professors told you. I don't care what your neighbors told you. I don't care what the cool cat with the, with the, uh, with the tie-dyed shirt on with the funky bell-bottom pants told you. The reality is Jesus is the only way. The only way. There's no other way. You say, well, that's not inclusive. Well, it might, it, listen, two plus two might not be inclusive. But there's facts. Two plus two doesn't equal eight or six or 12. There's truth. And the truth is that God loved you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross and all your sin was put on him. That's the reality. And all you have to do is give up your way of doing things. Let me talk about Christianity for a minute. Christianity ain't about going to church and, and, and carrying a Bible. Christianity is about you giving up your life. And, and, and listen, to, and, and listen, and I am one who's going to tell you, go to church, go to church, go to church, go to church. Don't go to church Sunday. Go to church Sunday and Wednesday. If you're sitting here and you're not used to going to church Wednesday, come to church. I invite you Wednesday. It's amazing. It's amazing. Church is really important because church is a training center that you can systematically learn you know what? The things of God. It's so smart. 
It's God's. And by the way, you know, for all of you crazies who think, oh, no, church is man-made and all this stuff. It's in the Bible. It's God's plan. Yes, exactly. Okay. But here's the reality. If you are saved already, you still have the opportunity to get to the end of your life and never fulfill what God has called you to walk in. Never. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'll show you why. I'll show you why today. I'll show you what God says about you. Because these two yous are very real. And what I want to do is start to teach you, you know what, how to see the calling in your life of what God called you to do. And I'll show it to you today. Look what it says. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. How many, how many are born of God? How many have got born again? Raise your hand if you got born again. Well, then let me, let me just take the time to talk to, to Carlos for a minute. I'm going to talk to Carlos. And as I'm talking to Carlos, understand I just don't have time to talk to you all. Okay? But I am talking to you all. Do you understand that? So, Mike, when I talk to Carlos, I'm really talking to you, too. Got it? I'm going to talk to Carlos. You know what? But I'm really, you know what? Talking to everyone. Do you got that? So here's what, look, 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 Carlos, are you born again? Yes. Do you love Jesus? I love him. Okay. So at one point in time, you were born, you know what, you, you were, uh, what, what's your birthday? 11th, November 12th. Uh, November 12th. So November 12th, you know what, you were born of the flesh. But then years later, you got born again, that's what born again means, and you gave your life to Christ, and you became a Christian. Here's what the Bible says about you. Here's what God says about you. For whatever is born of God, who's he talking to right here? That's you. Are you born of God? Okay, I'm talking to Carlos, but I'm talking to you. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Let me tell you, Carlos, you overcome the world. That is the vision that God... How many know I'm talking to you right now? How many know that's the vision that God has for you? That's what God speaks over you. That's who God sees you at. That's, that is who you really are. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Now, if... Let's say, let's say, uh, uh, Warren Buffett. How many know Warren Buffett has a lot of money? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you don't know, Warren Buffett is in the top five richest people in the world. Okay, or maybe the top ten. But he's not, he's not a millionaire, he's a billionaire. Like, a lot of billions, okay? And Warren Buffett, he, he made his money particularly in the stock market. Now, how many know if Warren Buffett came... And had some financial advice. And let's say he, he calls me up and he say, hey, you know what? I don't know why. I don't know why I'm doing this. But uh, I just feel that after the second service, I'm going to meet everybody. And everybody who has nachos, I'm going to give them stock advice. How many would come next week and buy some nachos? Right? Right? Can I tell you what? This advice is way smarter than Warren Buffett's advice. Because this advice is going to tell you, he's already, he's already told you, okay, this is the reality, Carlos, that you are a world overcomer. But now let me give you a practical reality of how that gets worked out. Because we're all world overcomers. But, but sometimes... We don't overcome the world. So he's going to tell us. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. What is the victory that overcomes our world? Come on, the answer's up on the screen. What is the victory that overcomes the world? Everybody. What is the, look at the screen. What is the victory that overcomes the world? 
our faith. Now notice what it says and notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say faith. It says, what does it say? Our Our faith. Can I teach you about God? God's not like, oh man, I got an extra word. It's our. What am I going to do with it? Oh, maybe I'll just stick it here. I won't say, this is what overcomes our world, faith. I'll say, this is, I'll put our there. How many know God doesn't do that? He is going to use his words very specifically to teach and coach and train you. And God says, even though you are a world overcomer, if you're born again, here's what's going to cause you to walk in that victory. Uh, there are people, there might be some person who won the lottery. Maybe they're worth $48 million, but they misplaced the lottery ticket. Maybe. Maybe. How many know that ticket might be, might not be in the washing machine. It might be in the drawer. And all they have to do is get that out. And they will have that money to their account. But they got to take that out of their drawer and turn it in. That's what this scripture is saying. It's saying, first, you're a world overcomer. But understand that you can not accomplish what I've called you to overcome because you aren't using. You can personalize it. You're not using what? You're not using your faith. What is faith? Faith is simply trusting in God. So you've got to Put your trust in God. God has already told you you're an overcomer. But what you've got to do in that two realities, this is who God's called you to be, and this is who God, and this is what Satan wants you to be. You've got to, by faith, start to exercise that faith and start to make a difference in your life and start to put your trust in God. Can I tell you, sometimes it's just a matter of walking it out. How many know you can say, oh, I'm going to get in shape. And you can, you can eat, you know what, you can stop eating, you know what, nachos. You can stop eating, you know, jelly-filled donuts. You can start eating broccoli. But how many know if you start that tomorrow and you eat a bunch of broccoli and you go out and you, you know, you lift a bunch of weights. And how many know in the afternoon you might not look any better? What's it going to take? It's going to take a commitment that you make to put your trust in God. Listen to me. I don't know who I'm speaking to. There are, there, are, um, there are challenges in front of you. There are going to be challenges. I'll use the same, same analogy. If you're trying to get in shape, there are going to be challenges in front of you. You're going to go home, and you know what? Your wife is going to... It's going to have baked, you know what, what my wife makes. She makes this, uh, this uh, Butterfinger cake. Oh, oh, my goodness. Georges, have you had some of the butter? Is the Butterfinger cake, it's so delicious. So you come home and there's Butterfinger cake or there's broccoli. I mean, no, these are challenges you have. Okay. But listen. You're not going to make that change in your life. And, and listen, and I just use that analogy, you know what, with, with the physical body. But I'm not, how many know I'm not talking about physical body? I'm talking about your spiritual, you know, more uh, um, health. Can you turn me down a little bit? I'm talking about your spiritual health. That you would, and just like that, there's times you don't feel like coming to church. I know, oh no, I'm not talking to anybody here. Sorry, okay. But you understand the reality, 
I don't feel like going to church. I mean, you know, talk to somebody this morning. They said, oh, I, I had it. I just, you know what, had some struggles last night. And I got up this morning. I was like, eh, I don't want to just stay in bed. We all can think that way. And you know what she did? She said, I'm not going to stay in bed. I'm going to go to church. Come on, come on. My, uh, my, when, I, when, I was, when I was swimming, you know what, and, and at, you know what, at that mighty, uh, you know, institution, Pioneer High School, I was on the swim team. And my swim coach taught, taught me, he said, he said, listen, when you don't want to go to practice, that's when you should go to practice. Oh, yeah. Because your competition sometimes don't want to go to practice either. And they're going to go home early. But you're going to be doing the work in the pool. Amen. And that work in the pool, when you are on the blocks, you know what? You're going to look over that guy and go, hey, you know what? I went to practice every time. And I hope you like this view because you're going to see me from behind. Amen. Amen. Because I'm going to smoke you today. And I'm going to smoke you today, not because, you know what, uh, of anything except my understanding that if you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. In the same way. How many receive in this? In the same way, we've got to start to discipline ourselves in the spiritual realm and recognize there's some things that we going to do, but you're not going to be, you're not, you, faith comes through hearing. So you start to put the word in, start to put the word in, start to put the word in, start to put the word in. And all of a sudden you recognize, oh my goodness, all of a sudden there's a time that you, that God was asking you to do that and you couldn't trust in God. And now all of a sudden you can trust in God. Watch it. Can I connect the dots? Now there's a, there's the enemy, the world, but you are that world overcomer. Because what's going to overcome? Here's what's going to overcome. You're recognizing that God is smarter than anything else that, he, that you could come up with. You have to submit to God's authority, to God's wisdom. And you're not going to do that by spiritually eating Doritos and Cheetos. How many of you got Cheetos Christians and you got broccoli Christians? Come on, let me see some broccoli Christians. But you got to do it more than just raising your hand. You know what? I look, uh, I look at, 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 at Jason Sr. Jason Sr. isn't a Cheeto Christian. He's a broccoli Christian. Amen. What do you mean? He's in prayer. I said he's in prayer. I said he's in prayer. You know what? He comes. He doesn't come to one service because at hope, you know what? The plan isn't that you come to one service. But more than hope, this is Christianity. Our calling isn't just to be served and be served and be served and be served and be served. That's not our calling, folks. Our calling is that we would serve, that we would be served and grow up in the things of God so we can serve. Are you catching that? The calling in your life. You said, Pastor, I mean, the first service was almost full. The second service isn't packed. But you know what? We got a lot of people here today. Amen. But how many know we could, uh, and I wouldn't do this because this, the Holy Spirit told me, you know what? Make more room. Because I want people up front praising. And then he told me, take out another row. And I don't even know exactly how is the vision. What is going to take place. But the calling in this church is to is to have people that are passionate for the things of God. That's not the I'm sorry. Correct me. That's not the calling in this church. That's the calling to Christians everywhere. Every church should have popping, jamming, passionate, dancing, shouting, praise and worship. 
every church. Amen. And you know, no, 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 because that's not, no, no, listen, here, if, here, when we get to heaven, look me in the eye and I'll say, see, I told you. I told you. Amen. The Bible says that God's, you know, that we are to pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Trust me. And you say, how do you know that? Because I've seen it in the word. God sends his will through his word. I can show you over and over and over again. The call to praise is a passionate call to praise. Watch this. All eyes up here. I know I'm going into praisey, but... It, it is what it is. I need to be led by the Spirit. It, the call to worship is a passionate to praise. Not a casual praise. I, I'll say it again. Not a casual praise. Let me, can I talk to men for a minute? Because men, you have a tendency to be more casual. And that's not your calling, men. Your calling is to lead your daughters. Your calling is to lead your sons. Your calling is to lead your wives. You say, yeah, but I'm, I'm this old. I can't, I can't dance like, uh, like Pastor Joel. You mean? I can't, I, I, can't, I can't dance like that young Pastor Drew dances. Come on. Okay. Well, you know what? Can you bend your knees? Because if you bend your knees, your head will go up and down. And that's a form of dancing. Amen. You say, Pastor, I think you're trying to get me to do what I don't want to do. No, no, no. It's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to do what your spirit man wants to do. And you just got to tell your flesh to shut up. How's that going to happen? through your relationship with Jesus Christ. You know what I want to do, folks? I want to please God. I want to please God. And if it pleases God, I don't care what my past is. I don't care what my traditions are. The the Bible says it's the traditions of God that cause the word to have no effect in your life. What does that mean? That means God is telling you to do something And you won't do it because you haven't done it that way in the past. That's what a tradition is. Oh, oh, really? God help us. No, that's not who I want to be. Are you learning something? I know this is more forceful than maybe you're loose. I know I'm smacking some people around. But how many know I get smacked around a little too? Come on. How, How many know God smacks me around a little bit? I mean, in love. In love. How many of the Bible says that discipline is love? Amen. Hallelujah. Can I tell you one of the ways that God smacks me around a little bit? He's smacking me around a little bit right now. How? I don't feel like being this aggressive to y'all. But he's smacking me. Do what I tell you to do. All right. And here's what I believe. I believe that God knows more than I know. See, I'm thinking, ooh, they're probably probably going to be offended. But what do I know? You know what? You guys are probably going, hey, that's right, man. I'm going to bend my knees next time. Do you understand? God knows. I don't know. So I'll let him smack me around. Here, let me tell you my my commitment. I I will tell you whatever he tells me. And if you get mad at me, you know what? Hey, look, I, look, I just got the pizza. Amen? I didn't make the pizza. I just to deliver the pizza. Amen? You got I, I didn't make it. I, I'm just delivering this. Are you learning something? Okay. You got time for some more? You want some more? Okay. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter... Uh, chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Look at your neighbor and say, oh man, I, I, hope your, uh, I hope your shoes are on tight. Okay. Now, now what are we talking about? We're, what are we talking about? We're talking about the two visions. What has God called you to do? And what has your flesh called you to do? 
What is your nature called, your, your carnal nature called you to do? What is your old nature called you to do? And what has God called you? Now it shall come to pass. I, I like this because there's so many words in the Bible. There's so many promises in the Bible, but they're promises that are, listen to me, that are conditional. There's so many Christians, there's so many Christians and they want all the blessings of God, but they forget to read the conditions of what God says. He doesn't say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. He says, I'm going to do this if you do this. Okay, so let's pay it. Look at your neighbor, say, pay attention to the ifs. Okay, now it shall come to pass. And and, and I like, look look at the clarity. Guys, all, all lies up here for a minute. Look at the clarity. I'm going to be loud for a second. It's going to come to pass. That's God talking to you. The only variable is you. That's what he said earlier. He said, you are over. If you're born again, you're overcomer. But this is what you need to overcome. You cannot not trust in me. He's saying the same thing. How do you trust in God? When you say, God, this don't make any sense. But you know what? Well, I'm 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 going to fast tomorrow. Wow, it got real quiet here. (laughs) Right, or whatever. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, could it be? I'm just saying, could it be that you're one commitment away from a breakthrough? Could it be? That you know what? That God is the one who's saying, it's not me who's saying, hey, come to corporate prayer at 7.30 in the morning. But God is speaking to you. And you're just that one commitment away. I'm not talking about coming once. I'm talking about like so many people that come to hope. We got a whole slew of people. They come every single, you know what, uh, a Sunday at 7.30 to pray. A bunch of people. Amen. And I believe there's a bunch of people more. Yeah. Amen. I believe that, that, that you can, you know why I can preach a sermon like this? Because I believe you can take a sermon like this. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And there's a bunch of people now come to prayer. They, don't do, they didn't used to come to prayer, but now they're coming to prayer. Or maybe it's something else that God is asking you to do. Amen. And you're just one, one thing away from, from you walking into a breakthrough that you want to, and you're thinking God is the one who is, who is, you're thinking God is the one who is, who's causing breakthrough not to come in your life. But then you come to church and you're confronted with the truth. Where, no, let me tell you what God's part is. God says, it's going to happen. And the only way it's not going to happen is if, You aren't diligently, if you don't diligently obey the voice of God. That's the only thing that's going to keep you from walking in the blessings of God. According to him. Amen. Are you learning something? Now it shall come to pass if you diligently, don't, don't forget the if, obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments. Let me talk about all his commandments. All the commandments that you know to do. Does that make sense? And here's what happens. How many know when you're diligently to do what God has commanded you to do, what does he do? He gives you three more commandments. You know what that's called? Sanctification. Okay. Okay. So just, just so you know, just be responsible to all what you know to do. Amen? But recognize, if you know it, you're responsible to do it. Wow. To observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today. Oh, I'm sorry, let me say one more thing about this. And understand it's your responsibility to find out what all his commandments are. Thank you. Uh, I command to you today that the Lord your God will set you, watch this, high above all the nations of the earth. High above all the nations of the earth. High above all the nations of the earth. Next verse. 
Guys, we're going to run through this. And all these blessings, and all these blessings, all of them. Somebody say all of them. All these blessings, not some, all of them. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because, do you see it again? You see the provision? You see the, the requirement? Because you obey the voice of the Lord. It's not coincidental. It's not because, you know what, God loves, you know what, you more than you. No, it's that you're obedient. I'm, you know, I can say this. And you're not. I'm not saying you're not. I'm just, just an example, right? You're just sitting in the front row, right? Okay. You understand that? Or vice versa. It's because it's not coincidental. It's because you're obedient and you're not. Right? Not coincidental. Stop blaming God for you not walking in the blessings that he has for you. And it's, uh, watch, watch all of them. You'll be blessed in the city. You shall be blessed in the, in the, in the country. Ooh, how many know? What's God saying? Wherever you you go. You shall, watch, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Who's he talking to primarily? Right now, he's talking to, right back here, farmers and ranchers. You know what he's saying? Let me translate to us. He's going to bless us in our businesses. Blessed shall you be, uh, blessed shall be your basket and your needling bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be what? When you go out, and the modern translation, and blessed shall you be when you go to in and out. I know, that was corny, that was corny. But you see the point. What is God trying to communicate? You're going to be blessed all the time. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. You shall come. They shall come out against you one way, but they're going to flee seven ways. The Lord will command his blessings on you in the, watch the, watch the totality of this, in the storehouse in which all of which you set your hand, in all of which you set your hand, and you shall be blessed in the land which the Lord, your God, watch this, this is really important, we'll look at this next week, in all that the Lord is, what? Giving you. Let me tie you in your faith. He's going to give them all these things, but they have to have faith To walk, we'll look at this next week, to walk into a land that is already inhabited. Ooh, I think if God is just going to do it, I'm just going to sit here on my lazy butt and do nothing and expect the blessings of God to happen. Can I say lazy butt in the second service? I'm going to just sit here and do nothing. You know what? I don't give nothing. I don't pray nothing. I don't do. No, I don't just do. I don't do nothing. But I'm gonna expect that God is gonna bless me. You know what? I love you. You're delusional. You know what? And 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 you don't understand. This is not the calling. But if you, I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking to somebody over here. But if you want to be blessed, you will see the value that God is saying. Look, we got this. I got you. But you got to do your part. And the Lord will establish you, watch this, as a holy people to himself. You know what God wants? God wants you. He don't want a part of you. He wants you to stop giving him a little token. He wants you all in. Okay. Just as he swore, watch his commitment, just as he swore to you, if you, this is his promise to you. Guys, all you got to do, just trust me that when I tell you what to do, do it. That's, That's what overcomes the world. Your faith, your willingness to trust me. And if you can't do that, then I, I, how, how can I give you directions and then I give you directions to a land flowing with the milk and honey? You're like, mm, I, I don't think it's left. I want to go right instead. God's like, it's, you see the two visions? You have to submit what God has called you to do, who God has called you to be. But if you'll do that, 
I'll tell you what, you know what, just get ready because God himself is saying, I tell you what I will do. I promise. I'm, I promise I'm going to bless you. I can't promise that I'm going to, that you're going to put your trust in me. But if you do, if you do, I tell you, you're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will establish you as his holy people, Jesus, just as he swore to you, if you keep, just as he swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that you see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be, watch this, they shall be afraid of you. Ooh, I, am, I ain't messing with George, man. He's got an anointing on his life. You know, he's committed to God. There's thing, you know what the Bible says? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know what God has called us? God has called us to be a holy people. God has called us that people would look at us and be jealous of us and be, ooh, huh, huh, huh. maybe I should start serving their God. Maybe they are blessed. And I'm not. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body and in the cre- again, look at the totality and the increase of your life and the produce of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you the good treasure of heavens to give you rain to the land in which the season and bless the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you, here's what I want to get you, the Lord will make you what? The head. head. Not the tail. Do you see the two visions? You shall be above only and not beneath. Amen. Yes. You say, you say, you say, yeah, exactly. There, there's, there's the condition again. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today to be careful to what? Observe. Careful to observe. Stop thinking God commands you to do stuff and you just think, oh, it's no big deal. Because that, that's the perversion of grace. I said, that's the perversion of grace. The Bible says in the New Testament that God hasn't saved us by grace in order that we could just sin as much as we want. He's saved you to walk in holiness. You say, yeah, but pastor, this is the Old Testament. This was written to the Israelites. I can show you, guys in the back go real quick. I can show you a passage in Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. And the Bible says, watch this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is anyone that hangs on the tree. Next verse. That the blessings of Abraham. Do you know what I just read you? The blessings of Abraham. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the what? Might become, come on. Might come upon the Italians. We've got some Italians in the house, amen? That could come on the Hispanics. Do I got some Hispanics in the house? Amen? Do I got some Germans in the house? Amen? Right? All of these people aren't Jewish. I mean, maybe we have some Jewish people in the house, but that ain't me, amen? My last name is Cohen, but it's not spelled K. It's not spelled C O H E N. It's spelled K O E N. But guess what? God has grafted me in, and the Bible says this is New Testament, guys. The Bible says that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Watch this. The Gentiles in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many want to hear something else? How many want to hear some more? Okay. okay. You come next week and I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm not at a message, but I'm out of time. But I, I, I will show you next week some things that will be extremely helpful to you. I'm going to show you why the Israelites died in the wilderness instead of walked in the promised land. And it has nothing, I'll show you, it has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with their choices. If something I said ministered to you, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand real high. 
I want you to raise your hand real high. I want you to say, God, I need some help. Okay, now everybody look at me. The word was sent to help you. So act on the word. Whatever God is, whatever correction he's made. How many would raise your hand and say, God is not only, I mean, I was encouraged by the word. How many would raise your hand and say, I got corrected today by the word. Okay, that correction is his love. But you got to be corrected. Amen. It's not enough for you just to say, oh, I've been corrected. Now be corrected. Does that make sense? Take the correction. I don't know what that means. I'm too busy trying to figure out my own correction. Amen. But I am figuring it out. Hands back up. Father, help us to not only hear your correction, help us to be what we said at the beginning, to be not just doers of the word, but not just hears the word, but doers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.